is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in love. God's doing something in Boone County that may last a few weeks. So, listen to me. I know, I know we are tired. I know you're tired. Revival will wear you out. But I promise you this, at 630, when you get in here, there's an energy that kind of fills the room. That energy is called the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost kind of gives you a little breather there for a couple hours to enjoy what's happening and you get to go home and get in your bed and ready for the next day but revival has been amazing 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 but just a couple things for this upcoming week just some kind of house cleaning stuff we need to make sure that we have a couple men here like about 5 30 something to 6 
so we can start parking people. Uh, if we, Wednesday night, if we would have not had some guys already sitting outside when, when I, we started seeing the mess, we would have had a mess. People were getting ready to start blocking roads and driveways and all that stuff. So we need some guys, if you will, just two or three, around 5.30 to start getting here and help park cars. Then also, this week, Terry Nagy has put a lock back on this hallway door that leads back to the classrooms. Parents, let's try to keep our kids with us at all times, if possible. Last week we had some kids, and I don't think they were our kids, but they were trying to get back into uh, the, the school and all that, so we need to make sure that we're gonna have that door locked, and then we're also gonna put a lock on the door in between Shelly and the nursery. So if they need nursery, it's gonna be available, but they're not gonna be able to get on back. So nobody, don't let kids use this door right here in the sanctuary, and they can't get down either hallway. So let's make sure we, we do that. And then also, after service on each night, this sanctuary looks like Jesus showed up. There's chairs everywhere, tissues everywhere, and all that good stuff. If we could have a couple volunteers each night, hey, listen, if one or two people will just stay and just pick up trash, try to line the chairs back up, run a vacuum cleaner, check the bathrooms, make sure the trash is out, that would really greatly be appreciated. It's it's tough to, to do all that. I know Miss Kimmy took towels home every night this week, and she's washed two and three loads of towels every night, and so thank you so much for that. I know Belinda's going to be here a couple days this week. We can take care of some of that and get that. You don't have to worry about that every day this week, but if you still want to do that a couple nights, that would be great. So, But also, I want to encourage everybody to come. Yes. And listen, I know we, we, we don't know what to expect. People saying, well, I have this to do. I, I already planned it. If you've got something you need to do, miss a night and go do it. Come back the next night. Be here when you can because God's been doing amazing, amazing things this past week. And I want to give my disclaimer and my warning. Watch who you align yourself with through this revival. Because there are Pharisees and religious people that will try to talk you out of an amazing, amazing time in your life. You know, I've, I've already got text messages. I've already got messages. I've got through the grapevine. They're just being emotional down there. In a few weeks, a few months, this thing will, they'll forget all about this. Miss Shelley, can you walk up here just for a moment? Can you walk up here just for a moment, Miss Emma? Jagger, where are you at? I seen you walk in. Can you come up here just for a minute? Lori Belcher, will you walk up here just for a minute? Where's Emma Nelson? Will you walk up here just for a minute? Nita Kirk, will you walk up here just for a minute? Now, I know how we get sometimes. You know, we get, we get used to God moving in our lives, and it becomes normal. Or, and we say, well, I've kind of forgot what it felt like. You know, I would love to stay in that moment where I got saved. But you know, sometimes we forget. And people saying, well, three months down the road, two weeks down the road, all the emotional stuff will end and we'll just go back to what it is. That may be the case for some people, but for this young man in three months from now, he was once lost and now he's found. And he's going to remember yes. sitting right there and having a salvation moment like I've never seen before. <laughs> Anxiety and frustration. Three months down the road from now, she's going to remember what God did. Yes. Three months from now, when she's still able to sit crisscross and touch her toes because God healed scoliosis, she's not going to forget. From birth, loss of hearing. We asked her Wednesday, how's, how's your week been going? And she said, I never realized my kids were this loud. <laughs> so in three months from now, 
She's still going to have hearing and she's not going to forget what happened this past week. Anxiety and the devil playing mind games three months from now, she's not going to forget. A praying mama for her son and three months from now, she's not going to forget that not only did he get saved, but he got baptized and then turned around and baptized his own wife. So be careful who you align yourself with in this moment. Because the very thing that your family needs, the very thing that you need, the very thing that we need, the devil may talk you out of it. Thank you all. That's just who's here that I see. There's probably more testimonies. Listen to me. I've seen some things in my life as a pastor. I have prayed for people and they go to the doctor on Monday and say, well, last week I had a heart problem and God healed me. But you know, we say that and that kind of gives a little leeway for people to say, well, maybe the doctors got it wrong the first time. Well, when I see a young girl show me yes. her arms with scars, not cuts, not scratches, not scabs, but scars, and I walk back there and I'm talking to Chris Brown and they holler at me to come back 10 minutes later and they're gone? Now call me emotional, call me whatever, but I'm sure if that was your daughter, you'd get a little emotional too. I'm sure if that was your daughter, you'd get a little emotional too. I'm sure if God would mess you up, you would get a little emotional too. Why would God give us emotions if he didn't want us to use them? Nowhere in the Bible does it say that the Holy Ghost moved in David and caused him to dance. No, David just knew that he was in the presence of the Lord and King David got emotional and danced. Oh boy. Be careful who you align yourself with in the next few weeks. They will talk you out of an amazing time. There's a story that he that he kind of alluded to last week in one of his sermons. But Jesus went out of his way to meet a Samaritan woman at a well. He read her mail at the well. Matter of fact, lady, the man you're with right now, he's not your husband. And you know what she did? That girl got emotional and ran back to town to tell everybody what Jesus had done for her. When I sit and I see my daughter and my son in the altar and the Lord blessing them, I promise you, I'm going to get emotional again this week when I see that. When I see your sons and your daughters getting blessed in this altar, I'm going to get emotional. Come on. I didn't got to my sermon yet. My warning again, be careful who you let in your ear and be careful who you align yourself with. Well, this is stuff that we pray for, church. This is what we've been praying for, for miracles. And did, did God not sit in this sanctuary and speak through us one, just a couple months ago and said, I am about to bring refreshing and you're going to see miracles and signs and wonders. And we got happy. And now that 
nobody's doing it. We got Christians who are bashing us. I, know, I, I never knew what it felt to be Jesus. The man would go do miracle signs and wonders and Pharisees would look at him and say, you're of the devil. You got a devil in you. They crucified him because of it. Don't get discouraged. They're going to laugh at us. I told you all that. They're going to ridicule. Hey, listen, I was at a ball game yesterday. Our team was warming up, getting ready. And I'm talking, our coaches, we're sitting in the end zone talking about revival, not even worrying about our kids getting loose for the game. I've drove by your church every night this week. The parking lot's packed. I've seen your post all week of what God's doing. I was a little skeptical, and he said, but then I thought about my dad, how God touched him. I'm getting to talk to lost coaches that, that I get to hang out with every day about miracles and signs and wonders that God has done in this altar this week. Our kids are getting to hear me talk about it. I love it. Let the talkers talk. And we'll let God do what God does. Move. Amen? All right, I'm going to sit down after our ushers come. Oh, wait a minute. We ain't done yet. pray for Charlie's mom. Charlie's mom fell last week during revival and uh, she's in Pikeville, correct? Is that where they, she's in Pikeville Hospital and she's got, she hit her head and broke some, some bones in her face but, and now she, her brain, she doesn't have a brain bleed but she's got bleeding in her membranes and then she's got blood clots. Well they can't treat one because of the other. If they try to give her uh, blood thinner it's messing with the, the, her, the, her, her head, so we need to pray. Rob Bowling, if you want to come over here, we're going to pray for your brother-in-law this morning. Uh, if you just need prayer, just come on. We'll just do it now. Yes. Won't you come on up here and we'll pray for him. And then also, we did a funeral yesterday. Well, I didn't do a funeral. There was a funeral here at the church, and uh, they, it was a COVID death. And then also, uh, they still have a family member that's in Pikeville that um, is on the ventilator uh, from COVID. So let's just gather around. Don't, don't sing the don't sing the, the second song. You just go to the first song again. And then uh, can somebody stand in for Vonda? We're going to pray for Miss Vonda. Vonda wants to come to revival this week. She but right now she's weak. She can't get herself in and out of the bed. She's just having a hard time with that. So can we just gather around right now and let's pray?
the flow that makes me white as snow. No other bound I know. I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in love.
I started taking pictures and I was sending them to Shannon and I was saying and he was like wow and instead of him sending me the score I was sending him pictures of what was going on at church <laughs> and so I don't know if you guys remember but we said a prayer like we did an offering prayer how we say that we said that I don't know for how long but it was Acts 4 and 29 and 30 we did we did and it was and now Lord behold thy threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child Jesus Whoa. and that's what Madison Church of God said every time and Shannon would say I know when we say that we about to go because <laughs> remember I'm like 17 years old and so when dad pulled that out so we had revival at Madison Church of God right before dad went into his last stage and it was amazing and it was great and then dad got sick in church one morning and everybody kind of knows the story about that but we stood on that word well I'm getting ready the other morning and I'm pouring my coffee and the Lord spoke to me and he said do you see your signs do you see your wonders yes. remember what y'all said yes. in this area so then when my daddy died and I spoke at his funeral his casket's here and brother Hartwell who's the district overseer at the time he comes up to me and he did a beautiful thing and he said Autumn they're getting ready to shut that casket and I'm telling you it's Hulk and I put my hands on my dad and he said can I put my Bible in with him and I thought oh no you don't want to do that you don't want to put your Bible I mean when you're a minister your Bible is gosh that's, that's precious Lord showed you things and prayed over things and he said I want to Autumn I want to so he opened it up and you know the scriptures he put it on and we agreed with my daddy in a casket that signs and wonders will be done in this area, in Madison, in Boone County. And his hands right now are on the district overseer's scriptures for this area. His hands are still there. And it's on those. And the Lord spoke to me and reminded me, here it is. Honey, people make fun of you. It's okay. It's all right. I've never fit in. I still don't fit in. And I'm cool with that. It's all right. But hear what I said. Until you've been where some of these people have been. And you've heard and you've begged God. When I begged God for my husband, when they said, they ain't nothing for him. He's crushed in the mines. There's no hope for him. But I said, I'll talk to my husband. And God gave me a peace, and he'll do it for everybody. He doesn't do it for me. And it wasn't because my dad was some great preacher. preacher. He had lots of faults, I promise. But he loved this area, and he had a burden. And I remember saying, can we go somewhere again? I want to be here. I went to my middle school, and I'm weird. <laughs> you know, there's not many kids that speak in tongues. You know. <laughs> And how am I going to find a husband that loves the Lord like I do? And when I met him, I said, you got to be church of God. I'm sorry. <laughs> and he said, where do I sign? <laughs> and I, I mean, that's just where it is. He's, his parents are the elders of the church of Christ. So I'm not lying to you. It's, you just go, oh, my gosh. It's okay to be different. But what you're seeing today is through prayer from people in this area coming to pass. Patty, you know it is. And I didn't want to come up here and say this, mainly because I just don't want to embarrass my kids. But you know, <laughs> they're used to me embarrassing them. And this is from God, and this is what so many saints that have went beyond us, and, and they're praying. And this is just confirmation. I can't wait to see what happens this week. <laughs> That's why we should never bash those.
those that went before us in our heritage. I didn't, I didn't even know this, Lord. But I know that's the very same words that God has told me, that he's told us in here openly. Pete Atkins, Stacy Davis, Larry Sterling, Ronnie Luke. They all have a part in this. The Patty, years ago, Curtis White, somewhere this morning, but all these ministers that were before us, they got a part in this. They, they're, they're, they, they have prayers that are still out there that God is still answering yeah. right now. I have seen so many things this week that I've never seen. I've never seen scars leave somebody's hands. I've never seen Chris Brown running around looking for a pair of scissors so he can cut an ankle bracelet off of a home confinement person so they can get into the tank. <laughs> and then after church, he's like, God, please don't let her run because i got to get this thing back on her tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, man. My, listen, I've got people, a friend of me on Facebook are trying to. I'm like, who are you? What are you doing? Church was awesome last night. I said, didn't even know you was here. Didn't even, I mean, like, it's crazy. I've got people messaging me from Kentucky saying, my church is coming one night this week. What time are you starting? And you were talking about different denominations. Uh, me and Adam was sitting talking to a, a minister the other day, and he said, you know that, you know, the denomination that I'm in, uh, many don't believe like you all believe, but there are two churches in Lincoln County that are coming to revival this week to be in service because they're hungry to see something happen. I don't care. Listen, this is the week we just take denomination out the door and just, and just say, hey, all welcome, let's go, let's have church. If you shout, shout. If you dance, dance. If you run, run. If you sit, sit. I don't care. Let's just have church. Yeah. Amen. You ready to sing song too? Sure. <laughs> you're taking up 
Yeah, we, okay. Happy wants, to, <laughs> Happy wants to get big money this morning, so if our ushers would come. Hey, and I want to thank you all for your giving this past week. It was amazing. Um, he took up Sunday night. If you remember, Sunday morning he told us to keep the offering for our church, but Sunday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, he, we took up an offering, and then Wednesday night he asked you all for a special offering for the Hardy, the Hardy County trip. He took up an offering on Wednesday night that was more than the first three nights, which all of it was good, and then you all supported him at his table as well. So uh, we, I want to thank you all for your giving. And just he was uh, just really uh, blown away with our generosity and giving. So thank you all so much. And I'm telling you, it, it, revival's not cheap. Money-wise, tired-wise, I mean, it, it costs us a lot. So here's what I want you all to do this week. Hey, when you get an opportunity to rest, rest. When you get an opportunity to take like a five-minute power nap, take it. Pull the recliner back and just relax and then enjoy it, man. God, I thank you this week. I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for what you've already done. But, God, I believe that better things are still ahead of us in this coming week. And I'm just asking you today, God, that you'd have your hand upon this service, already believing that you've done, done things already in this altar this morning. And I'm just asking you right now as we give, God, I'm asking you that, that, that we're blessed as we give, God, that we're not giving begrudgingly, but we're giving because we want to give and we're doing it cheerfully. Yeah. We just thank you. We praise you and we give you honor today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Song two. Come on, come on and bless him. For the Lord delights in the 
life in showing mercy. For the Lord delights in showing mercy. For the Lord delights in showing mercy. For the Lord delights in showing mercy. Come on, can you praise him this morning? Hallelujah, he's worthy. We've seen great and mighty things. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees when I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth. Then the darkness flees when I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth. Then the darkness flees when I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth. Then the darkness flees when I move my body. When I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. Strongholds are coming down. Jesus is lifted high. 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 Come on, somebody lift him high in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we want all that you have for us this week. Hallelujah. I've been praying. Lord, don't let us miss what you have, what you're sending out right now in this moment. Don't let us miss our moment. The Lord is working and He's moving. And you know what? It's because of prayers that have been sent. I wrote an article uh, a few months ago about sound. And did you know that the, the people that created the radio and things like that, they discovered that sound never dies. Hallelujah. It goes on and on. It just goes into, into the atmosphere and it bounces, but it never dies. Do you know what that means? The prayers that your daddy prayed for this church and this community and this area, they're still out there bouncing around. They've never died. Yeah. Hallelujah. The prayers that you prayed for your family, the prayers that your mom prayed for you and your family, the prayers that your grandparents have prayed for you, they've never died. They're yeah. still out there. We're, we're living on those prayers. We're having revival on those prayers combined yeah. with our obedience. Hallelujah. With us just stepping into what God has had. Don't stop praying for your kids. Don't stop praying for this revival. Step into it. Hallelujah. Take full advantage. Advantage right now of what God is pouring out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't even question. Hallelujah. He's pouring it out freely. He says, this is what I want to give you. <laughs> Hallelujah. It gives him great joy to bless his children. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. There's a power that's made perfect in my weakness. Fills me up with the strength that is fearless. And I find hope. For the Savior, Jesus, eternally, with all that I am, Lord, I give you my heart. So let the flame shine brighter, let your praise sing louder. In a moment, you turn morning into day.
scared because their parent told them if they got baptized they was going to get grounded different beliefs so I called some of their family and I said how'd it go we well, actually let rewind after they got back after they got baptized anyway they came and we prayed for them and then how to pray for something like that just like God have your will and like this is awesome she gave her heart to the Lord and got baptized and did all that stuff but 
didn't make mommy have leniency. Mommy forgot to ground her. <laughs> I love it. So, I've got this big long sermon to preach to y'all tonight. I'm ready to do it. God, I thank you. God, I thank you that you have graced us. God, you see something over this body of people that you're looking down and you're saying, this is the place that I want to pour out into right now. And you've entrusted us with this moment. And now, God, I'm asking you to help us understand how important this moment is that you have entrusted us. Let us be vessels of revival. Not just in this place, Monday through Friday or whatever days, but God, every day we leave out of this place, every service we leave out, we walk out these doors and we're vessels of revival. We take it with us wherever we go. We're the weird kid at school that speaks in tongues. We're the weird employee that just can't stop talking about all the miracles that God's done this week. We're the weird coach that won't shut up telling other coaches what God has done this week. God, I'm asking you, these teenagers that you've touched, don't let this just be a Nick Walker time. Let this be a time that, God, they realize that you're calling them out for a time such as this to reach their schools, to reach the athletes that are in locker rooms with them, to reach students that are in classrooms with them, and the ones that everybody else don't even speak to, you've called them to reach them. God, I thank you for today. I thank you for your word. Just ask you mess us up again today. In Jesus' name, amen. Like, we're coming out of revival, or not out of revival, we're in revival. And I'm like, God, what do you even want me to preach on Sunday morning? Like, I, I'm all confused. Where do we go? And I just want to, I think we struggle with this phrase, God is. I think one of the hardest things as individuals that we have is describing God. Because God is like weird sometimes. But we live in this world that's an amazing, amazing place. And most people are so focused on important things or trivial things that we don't even pay attention and notice the thing. You know, we, we notice that when me and Talena are rushing around the house trying to get kids off to school at, at, at something till 7 every morning. We, we see that stuff. We see or we're running late for work and we're stuck in traffic. We notice that, but it really does not come to our attention a lot that we're sitting in traffic and there is this big ball of fire setting in the sky that God created allowing us to live today. It's warming the planet. That's amazing. You know why? Because God is amazing. Like, it's easy to say that, but it's, it's hard to explain how amazing He is. I can't put into words what God is. You know, every now and then we'll stop and we'll take notice like if I'm out in a tree stand hunting and I'll look and I'll see all the beautiful trees and the, the leaves and all that or if I'm driving down the road when I know like when Talena and I, we lived up north and we'd drive down the river, the Ohio River and just look out. I mean, you'd notice and you'd look or you'd go to the ocean and you'd say, man, look at God's creation. It's beautiful. But how often do we go beyond the natural and thank God, the supernatural, who created it. Can we just give him some praise right now? Do you know that right now, he is the one that is giving you life and breath and everything else? We're on the Sea of Galilee, and there's 12 men on a boat. There is a, 
a, a, a great storm and the, the boat is getting rocked. It's getting swayed. It's, it's going every which way. And these 12 men are on this boat and their leader is asleep. While they are panicking, while they are in this storm, the storm's raging and their leader is asleep. Sounds like me. I can sleep through anything. And they start saying, help us, Lord. Save us. We are going to die. Does that not sound like us in our circumstances? Help us. Where are you? I'm about to die. Jesus gets up and stretches and yawns and looks at them and says, peace be still. And instantly, not five minutes from now, but instantly the wind stop and the, uh, the waters calm and these men are amazed and Patty, they are a little afraid. They're not afraid at the miracle they just saw but the supernatural person that was in their presence because they make a statement and it says who is this guy that even the wind and the sea obey him so Jesus Christ God in human form and Jesus all throughout the New Testament he goes and he amazes people with the things that he did and the life that he lives God in human form. Just like the men that are out there on that boat. We, we, we are so often, we are so focused on the circumstances that are around us and we fail to notice the amazing God who is right there with us. So understand that this morning. When the sea is calm, we can't take him for granted. When the storm is raging, we cannot forget that he is right there with us. That It's tragic because we do forget those things. No matter what we are going through, no matter what this life throws at us, no, 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 no matter how challenging it gets, we need to thank God first. God's amazing. Everything about God is amazing. His amazing power, His amazing grace. And here's what's amazing they're real. His power's real. His grace is real. His mercy is real. His love is real. His compassion is real. And we don't want to miss this. We need to start to learn to fully appreciate an amazing God. It's time we get a bigger view of who He is because often we get confused when we start thinking about the nature of God because our mind is finite and we cannot figure out who He is. We know how to describe everything in our lives. When it comes to God, we just can't seem to put the words together. What does it do? What does it look like? How does this benefit me? We can answer those questions to almost everything in our lives. But when trying to describe an amazing God, Webster can't describe it. There's no words to describe it. it it's amazingness, if that's a word. It is now. Yeah, it's right. Even as we study and theologians and Bible scholars, we, we, we try to, we list all these descriptions of who he is and we will tell you what his attributes are. And we read those things, but even those, when we read them, they seem so impersonal. We describe people in our lives. We can answer the questions. Why are you marrying them? What fascinates you about them? What do you like about them? What do you dislike about them? Men do not answer that question. <laughs> what makes this person attractive to you? 
We can answer those questions about our spouses and about our friends. But when it comes to God, can we answer what he does? Can we answer how he does it? Can we answer how does he benefit me? Can we answer what does he mean to me? Not the simple default answers because that's what we always do. It's like kids. What did you learn in class this morning in Sunday school? Jesus. What about him? Jesus. Can we really get deep and personal answers? Can we answer those questions? I mean, let, let's, let's find out who God is. Go to Acts 17. The God who made the world and all things in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all people life and breath and some things. Okay, just make sure you're awake. All things. One of the most amazing things, Patty, about God is that he is self-sufficient. But it's one of the hardest things for us to grasp. It's not hard for me to believe that God is powerful. It's not hard for me, David, to believe that God's creator. Even people that are not even believers, when you say the word God, they think of somebody powerful. But to be uncreated and to be completely self-sufficient, he has no beginning. Describe that. Where did he come from, Dad? He's always been. Why? Does this happen at your all's houses? Because I said so. <laughs> He's always existed. And he didn't need help from anybody. My finite mind cannot understand that your finite mind cannot understand that our kids are always asking us where did God come from my answer is ask him when we get there because I have no clue he's always been and then you got the toddlers why why why? Why? I don't care what answer you give them. It could be the best answer. The only answer. Why? Why is it blue? Because it is. Why? Because they painted it that color. Why? Because they wanted to. Why? Because it's their favorite color. Why? We're having that conversation about paint. Now, can you imagine trying to tell your kid that God's always existed? Why? Why? The self-existence of God is the puzzle that even children get us on. Who made God? Why do you ask so many questions? But why do we ask these questions? I'll tell you why. Because we live in a society, we live in a, a, for a time frame that we understand cause and effect. That's how my mind works. If somebody or something exists, then someone or something had to have made it. If I get an egg sandwich, Talena had to make it, because I'm not going to. If somebody or something exists, then somebody or something had to have made it. We want to know where things come from. We want to know where, why, why stuff happens. Where'd you buy that car at? Why is it any of your business? Because I want to know. How did you wreck that car? We want to know. How'd your house catch on fire? How did this? How did that? Why? Where? We are so skeptical. We live in a, a, a skeptical society. People, we need to know how, when, what, why, and where. 
And especially why? That's why so many people are skeptics when it comes to God. We want to know where he come from. And I want to know why he won't tell us. But here's what I love. Instead, he reveals to us that he is and always was, and he didn't need your help. God doesn't fit in our cause and effect. And that frustrates me. Because, again, we live in that moment. I'm thankful, though, that he doesn't live in the bounds of cause and effect. What are you saying, Pastor? If God was the effect of another cause, he would not be God. And we would not exist. Let that one bounce off the back wall and get you in a minute. Stick with me because it gets, it, it gets gooder. You see, Adam, you cannot have a series of endless causes replacing all the way back into eternity. If that was the case, we would never have a present. And that would never, we would never get to you. Now, the fact that you and I and the world exist is the very proof that at some point there had to be a first cause that isn't caused. Y'all's looking at me like deer in headlights. Let me just put it down in easy Boone County. There must have been an originator. There must have been a God. So think about that. Uh, my mind's spinning too. But listen, it, this gets good. Take all the wonders of the world, Miss Patty, all throughout history, all the, the, the billions and billions of people that have ever lived, everything that has ever been accomplished in the world today. Church, if there is no God, then none of that stuff ever existed or happened. There is nothing else. But I've come to tell you today, there is something. There is you, there is me, there is your ability to think about a self-sufficient God who does not need you to exist. And yet, he exists so you can experience him. <laughs> it's amazing to me. He wants you to realize today that he does exist and that you can experience his grace. You can experience His goodness. You can experience His love. We can experience His power. Listen to me. Why are we so skeptical if He said, let there be light, and there was light? How I, I mean, how hard can it be for Him to say, let scars be gone? Let scoliosis die. Let cancer fall off. Why? How can we be skeptical with that? There was nothing. The earth was black. It was void without nothing. And he said, let there be. And we got all this. God wants us to experience him. But he doesn't need us. But he wants us. That in itself makes me want to run around this place. He wants you to enjoy him today. Why do you think God didn't just make a world with nothing but dull features? Instead, he got out a paintbrush and he created a beautiful, beautiful masterpiece. He created it so that you 
and me could wake up every I'm telling you there is nothing more beautiful than stepping out of my front porch on a good foggy morning and seeing the fog lift off those mountains back there it is beautiful <coughs> in fact it's going to be the cover of Talena's CD <coughs> but he created it so that we could enjoy it he wants us to see the world and everything in it and then turn around and say I give you praise because you are the creator and you are allowing me to enjoy this the apostle Paul is, is walking through Athens a few years ago and he's in a city with a bunch of smart religious people who would rather give credit to man made idols than the living God Everything in it. The God who made the world and all things in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all people life and breath and all things. Some of them got it, but some of them didn't. Just like a lot of people in the world today. Don't get discouraged if some people don't get emotional and amazed at the fact that scars disappear. Don't get discouraged if people don't see the amazement in scoliosis dying. Ears being opened. Blurry eyes seeing. Families restored. You see, not everybody's going to get emotional and excited about that because they're looking for amazement in man-made objects and man-made rules and man-made religion. You keep your eyes and your heart and your mind focused this week on the one who gives us everything and the one that no matter what everybody in the world may say, anything is possible. Anything. Someone once said... To say that God is invisible is to walk around with your eyes closed. I'm telling you, being invisible would be cool sometimes. But to God, it's a disadvantage. Skeptics say that God don't exist because I can't see him, Patty. But God being invisible does not limit his ability happy he can still make himself known it also doesn't inhibit his power to reveal strength and his presence you don't have to tell me when God walks in the room I can feel him and if you got the Holy Ghost living inside of you when he walks in the room you'll feel him too the Bible says in 1 John 1 or in John 1 and 8 that no one has ever seen God 1 Timothy 1.17 says, Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, to be honor and glory forever and ever. Now as humans, we, we don't have the capability of understanding invisibility. That just don't make sense. We think there's no seeing, there's no substance. Right? My thoughts are invisible and then my thoughts vanish. <laughs> you may not be able to see God, but let me assure you this morning, there's a lot of substance. There is a lot of substance. I can't see the wind, but I see the effects that it has. God is always here, but remember what John says in John 4, 24. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must Worship in spirit and in truth. He's invisible. He is a spirit and not flesh. As humans, not having a physical body would be a disadvantage. Being a spirit, it gives God an awesome characteristics, that, some, some pretty amazing things that makes him unique. You see, he's unrestricted by space, by time. He's invisible. 
Genesis 3 and 8. Listen to these moments. They heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees in the garden. Genesis 18, 2 and 5. When he lifted up his eyes, Abraham, and looked, behold, three men were standing opposite him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in your sight, please do not pass your servant by. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and and wash your feet and, the, and rest yourself under the tree. And I will bring a piece of bread and you may be refreshed. You're, you may refresh yourself. After that, you may go on since you have visited your servant. And they said, so do as you have said. How many remembers Exodus chapter 3? God speaks to Moses in a burning bush. Exodus chapter 13. The Lord was going before them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them on the way and a pillar of fire by night to give them light that they might travel by day and by night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night before, from, before the people. A burning bush and a cloud is pretty impressive. But it's not personal. That was a whole group of people. It's not a relation, yet God is all about intimate relationships with us. That's who he is. That's what he is. Through God's supernatural abilities, here's what I love about him. He is so amazing that he can connect with us as a loving father despite being invisible. No physical body. The Bible gives him attributes and characteristics that can help us kind of envision who he is and what he, that he wants to care for us and he wants to protect us and he wants to love us. Psalm 33, 19 says his eyes are on us. 1 John 5, 15 says if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Ecclesiastes 9 and 1 says the righteous are in God's hands. Psalm 85 and 8 says God speaks to us. Another thing that is cool about an invisible God who is without human form. He's emotional. Well, no, he's not, Pastor. Well, yes, he is, because I can go show you times in the Bible where he had anger. I can go show you times in the Bible where he laughs. I can go show you times in the Bible that he has compassion. I can go show you in the Bible where he has grief. I can show you in the Bible where he has jealousy. I can show you in the Bible where he has wrath. I can show you where he has joy. I can show you where he has love. In fact, the writer of Hebrews says that he's been touched. He, he's been through everything that we've ever been through. He knows how we feel. He knows our human emotions. God has experienced suffering. And guess what? He understands it when you're in the middle of yours. If he was just an invisible God, that would be horrible. But through supernatural transformation, God became man, and he lived on this planet for 33 years in the flesh. Jesus Christ, the flesh, he was exposed. God in the flesh. There was no burning bush. It was God in the flesh. And in fact, he went around Miss Angie and he proclaimed it very loudly. And he said, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So he's not talking about physical attributes when he says that. He's talking about character. He's talking about teaching. He's talking about actions that reflects the Father's heart. He is an amazing God. Selena, if you'll come on to the piano. This invisible God, why would he go to his great lengths to make his existence obvious? Why would he go to great lengths to make his nature known to men? Psalm 92, 90, 
Verse 2. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. There are a lot of things that our mind finds difficult to grasp about God. Another one that is difficult. I can't grasp eternal, infinite, omnipresent. We somewhat grasp His love, His grace, His power, but eternity, my mind don't go there. His omnipresence, that goes beyond my comprehension. Why? Because we are restricted by something called time. We work in the realm of time. What time does church start? What time does this guy end? What time do I have to be at work? What time do I have to kids have the kids at practice? What time? What time? What time? What time? Everything we do is revolved around a calendar and a clock. When can I come visit you, son? Let me get my calendar out. Nick tried to explain eternity the other night with a rope. That's one of the best explanations I've ever seen, but we still don't get it. Truthfully, there's nothing for us happy to measure it against. There's nothing for us to compare it against. We live in a space of time. And if y'all were here the other night, you, you remember just a little red space of time and we focus so much of our efforts on that little space of time that there was like 60 foot of rope left that is eternity do we realize everything we do in this moment determines where we go and spend eternity we, we say that we think that and we can't, our minds can't, can't grasp it because we know wake up, eat Reese Puffs drink a cup of coffee go do what we do through the day it's 11 o'clock it's time to go to bed alarm clock it's time to get up Eternity, there is no time. Eternity. There, I mean, there's only one being who is truly eternal. Eternity describes his existence. Infinite describes his being. There's no beginning. And he has no end he's self existent uncreated and he did not need our help he exists outside of my watch God why did you not come Lazarus is dead if you would have only come a couple days sooner well excuse me Mary and Martha but I don't work on time. I got all eternity. Lazarus, get up. He's infinite. And the thought of that is so amazing because he's infinite. His love, His grace, His mercy, His power knows no bounds. <laughs> all His boundless love, all of His boundless grace, His boundless mercy, His boundless power, it's ours. 
I am an infinite God who's everywhere all the time and everything I have is yours. And he gives it to us freely. Nobody in this room ever deserved it. This is personal. What does it mean? It means God is amazing. Amazingness. Your needs today. No matter what they are, they will never exhaust the limitless God and His limitless resources. No matter where you are today, He's there. You may be in this building right now. You may be watching on live stream right now. Your need today is nothing for a limitless God. Listen to me, our God is not some God who's lost somewhere in the cosmos. He can be reached with the feelings of our infirmities. No matter where you are right now, He's there. No matter what you've done, He's there. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, He's there. He's here right now. Not to find fault in us. Not to punish us. He's here right now to bless us. He's here right now to know us. The presence of God in our lives is unlike any other experience, Miss Patty. If you're here today and there's sickness and there's pain, He is healer. If you're here today and you're in financial need, He is provider. If you're here today and you're saying, Pastor, I'm just barely hanging on, He is sustainer if you're here today and you're lost the greatest thing he ever is savior God wants to be personal with some people right now God is bigger and better than we could ever imagine this God that has no beginning, that has no end, who is invisible, who's everywhere all the time, who's infinite. He said, I want to go sit in Fountain of Life Worship Center with some people who will acknowledge me as God. Most important people, like you got to know important people to get into their presence. Call you have your people, call my people, and we'll set up a day. We are his people. And the date's right now. He's approachable right now. This is not a fantasy. This is not a fairy tale. God is real, and He wants to be real in our lives. Matter of fact, Isaiah 46 says this, and I'm, and I'm shutting it down. For I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is no one like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, things which have not been done, saying, My purpose will be established, and I will accomplish all my good pleasure do you know that God wants to accomplish his good pleasure right here right now with you will you come if you need
need salvation, why don't you come this morning? The awesome, amazing God wants to get personal with you right now. Heads bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking around. Come on, if that's you, Pastor, I'm not where I need to be with the Lord, I'm lost. Well, Pastor, my relationship is not where it had, should be and where it has been in the past, and I need to get in a right relationship with you. I need to acknowledge you this morning as God and Savior. If that's you, would you raise your hand right now? I'm not going to embarrass nobody, I promise. If that's you right now, would you raise your hand and say, I need, I need a Savior. I need to come back to God. If that's you right now, listen to me. There is an awesome God tugging at your heart. A God who we think is so unapproachable. The God who created the universe. He is tugging at hearts right now. How awesome to think that the God who created the universe would love you enough to tug at your heart right now to say, I want to be in a relationship with